Hey everyone, this is my first YouTube video where I'm not just posting a short. Um, I recently posted a poll that asked my subscribers to give me like some ideas on the types of videos they'd like to see. And one that stuck out was um, three tips to do better in Bullet. Um, I recently hit 1900 in Bullet and predominantly I'm stuck around 1700 to 1800 um, with sort of highs and lows throughout that. Um, but once I hit 1900 I thought perhaps I could make a quick video just to kind of give some advice. Um, and the first piece of advice is really to uh, enable the settings that will help you win. A lot of games in Bullet are won by simply flagging your opponent. Um, flagging, if you're unaware, is basically running down the opponent's clock um, before your own clock runs down. And this can be done when you're up material or down material, or you know even drawing a position. It doesn't actually matter how stack the board is against you or how stacked it is against your opponent if they run out of time before you you're gonna win um, so hopefully some tips will help you better flag your opponent when it comes down to the crunch uh, of the, you know of the game um, so the first tip is if you go to a chessboard you'll notice that just on the bottom right of the board there's actually a little arrow and with this arrow you can adjust the size of the screen to your liking I've personally found that when I first started playing chess I was losing a lot of games via timeout because my board was simply too big. Um, I was zoned in on positions within the board that often left other positions or other pieces with outside of my peripheral vision. Um, and as a result of that I was simply missing some ta obvious tactics or I was missing free pieces just because I simply couldn't see it, the board was just too big. So as generic as this may sound, if you create a smaller board your focus is actually like much more I don't even understand what the word I'm trying to say is but your focus is more like directed at everything you're not going to miss anything on the peripheral vision that you might have that you may have because you'll be seeing everything um, and you'll see that this idea is like not that uncommon um, I have a video here of Grandmaster Wesley So and give me one second in the video let me just scroll across Give me one moment. How do I make this full screen for you? Probably should have done this preemptively, but knowing me, that's never going to happen. Okay, the board should be coming up now. <laughs> Perhaps not, just give me one more moment. Okay, it might cut off my own face, but that's fine just for this example. So. Now you'll see, okay, beautiful. So the board he's got is completely tiny compared to the whole screen he has. And a lot of nowadays lots of people have big monitors for various gaming reasons and like, you know, you obviously want a big screen for FPS games and that sort of thing. Yeah, because your field of view is obviously bigger. Um, but in kind of chess I feel like you kinda of want the opposite. You don't want too much stuff outside of your field of view. You want to be really directed in. If you look at him here, he's really directed in. This is the only thing he's considering the whole board. He doesn't have to worry about dragging pieces around. Um, a significantly large monitor. So if you have a large monitor, I'd, I'd really recommend trying to get to a board size that's a little bit smaller um, and a little bit more concentrated so that um, firstly, and this will be the main reason, is that when you get to actually playing um, where's an analysis board? Okay, so we're on analysis board now. You'll notice that like on a huge board, say we just have some silly moves, say I have to move my queen from this square to this square and a humongous board like it's such a it's such an effort to sometimes make silly silly moves that should be taking like a second because the board is just you have to move the mouse quite significantly across a huge distance um, whereas if you minimize the distance you're often you know you're making moves like a lot quicker don't really look at these moves but the point is, is that like you can move a lot quicker um, because the time spent going between square to square is like a lot lot quicker um, and when flagging is involved in bullet, you're going to want speed as the main concern. You don't even care about like what the opponent's doing. If you're down to one second, it will, will not matter what they're doing, unless they're trying to checkmate you directly or like it's obviously losing problems. Um, but you know, say you have a rook and a knight versus a bishop and a knight, uh, they're not going to find a checkmate in that period of time. You're not going to find one in that period of time. So it's important to just be pre-moving as much as possible, as quickly as you can, and when the board's a bit smaller, um, you'll generally have that option uh, available to you. 
So I do have some more written down from the first part. Okay, so we need to quickly discuss pre-moves. I might have briefly already mentioned it, but you need to have pre-moves enabled. You can enable them by going to a play, you know, any board that you have. Um, oh shit, I just realized I didn't change the scene. Fuck. Okay. Oh no, we might have just messed it up. Okay, I have to go back and check that, maybe re-record it, but... Um, you'll notice if you go to a play board, you'll have... The settings are actually slightly hidden for me, because <laughs> my background's grey. Um, but there's a little setting sign up here, and you want to enable a board. Firstly, that's pretty clear. Um, I know there's lots of different varieties of chessboard, and... Personally, I, I prefer green just because I feel like it's, it, it's black against green is quite an easy contrast for the eyes. Whereas like sometimes if you have black versus brown, it's a little bit harder to see. Um, but what you want to be setting is animation type fast. You don't want your pieces to be moving slow, it makes you feel slow. Um, so that's this one here. Your move method kind of depends on what you like. I like drag and click, um, where I can just click it and drop it, or I can drag it. Personally, I drag it. Um, but that will kind of depend on you. And... You always want to be showing legal moves, this will kind of just help you visualize different ideas and stuff. Um, that's the setting here, but on the main concern is on the live settings. So you really want to be enabling pre-moving here. Um, now some people won't promote to queen always when their pawn promotes. Um, sometimes you might need to promote to a knight in a very odd situation. This would happen very rarely, um, and the amount of times it would happen would probably be so minimal compared to the times that it would just save you time by automatically being a queen. So this setting is must, you really need to promote to a queen immediately. The, the time added to pre-move a square to the 8th rank and then have to click the queen out of the options is just going to kill time and it's also adding stress to like, if you're running low on time it's going to be very difficult to do. The low time warning you definitely need as well and that should be it. There should, there's a, little, a low time warning is just helpful just to let you know that you're, you're low on time. Um, so all these settings I think are really helpful for making you focus in the last 10 seconds. Um, okay, so let's have a quick look again at... Okay, so it was done. We've got the ideal settings enabled. We want those. We want pre-moves. We want auto-queen. We want the size of the board to be, you know, one that's reasonably smallish or not as big as you might be using. Um, we want a clear board so we can visualize and see the pieces easily. And we're enabling that setting that moves the pieces quickly, that makes the animation quick. Um, now we're going to shift to the second part of the video which is kind of again I've said three tips for bullet but it's more like each one is a package of tips um, so tip number two is you should basically just never give up hope um, when there's still a chance you'll often be in bullet games where you'll be down material um, but the checkmating threat isn't obvious or evident uh, say for example your opponent has a rook and knight three pawns and you just have a rook and a knight you're down three pawns of material, but there's no immediate checkmate. They might have obvious plans to promote to a queen. Um, but doing so and winning the game in a period of like maybe two or three seconds isn't isn't going to be easy for a lot of people. Um, and you'll see this rule will apply even in, uh, not even in bullet, but this will help in blitz or rapid if you have no time increment. Um, I'm going to show you a game very quickly from, uh, where is it? Oh, sorry, those were viewer games. I just need to find a r the rated games. Rated, let's search for that. Yeah, this game here, so I, you can see maybe that the screen shows. Uh, you can see that I had 82% accuracy, my opponent had 88% accuracy. Guaranteed win, basically I was losing entirely. And they played a very strong game. And the point of this is that even with a severe material disadvantage and a very significant time disadvantage. Um, the game is not over and it's still not completely clear who will win. Um, I made a quite a significant blunder and then obviously I'm facing a 10 point deficit. You can see my time is always 22 seconds. There's no increment in this game, the 3 minute blitz game. Um, and so as the moves progress, we get to a position where I should be. I should have lost. There's no doubt about it. But the only reason I didn't lose is because I kept quite a level head and threw in the next tips that I'm about to mention. Tip number one is one threat moves in bullet. Generally, one threat moves are frowned upon in wider chess because there's no uh, evident plan beyond that one move. Um, 
and obviously they're really easy to refute normally, but in bullet, a one threat move is one that you sort of have to directly notice or deal with. Um, if you just leave this threat or you pre-move, then the one threat move becomes a winning move. Um, and so doing simple checks, although they would do nothing in a rapid or blitz or classical game, uh, in this position obviously you would lose given the time constraint, what they do is they like one confuse the opponent because it's annoying to have to directly deal with the check um, and two it throws them off their plan you know their plans are obviously just to push the pawns here and go on and promote a queen and win uh, the opponent here has a almost a 20 second time advantage on me I mean this should be a no brainer I remember playing this and believing that I was going to lose um, and again I just want to say a combination of giving annoying checks but then seizing material where is possible is also good so the opponent probably expected me to do a check here um, but they didn't and anyway I won a pawn which is very odd because you know I think it went from one pawn against five to one pawn against three um, which is not a hugely life-changing situation but still enough to give me some hope here that I can flag and you'll see that after these silly checks, I'm expecting checks, all of these are pre-moved mostly, um, I can throw in my own sort of tricky moves, and even though they try and hide the king, the plan is just to always give checks, because checks will always slow down the opponent, and you'll see now the time deficit's gone from 13 seconds to 5.6 seconds, so we've already halved the time advantage against us, simply by being annoying, just throwing in checks that don't even work, one move threats, in any other situation that uh, definitely not not give you a fighting chance but bullet is unique because flagging is a viable way to win the game no matter what people think if, if people lose to flagging uh, they get mad but if they win to flagging they don't care so flagging is a viable way to win um, and you'll see that just going for silly checks we're slowly you know that that move there took uh, two milliseconds for the opponent to find which in a pre-move a pre-move is about one millisecond so we're slowly getting here this one is 2.4 seconds versus nine seconds so again hopefully there's some comp like some tips here that the combination of never resigning when there's a fighting chance to annoy your opponent and run down their clock <coughs> um, as well as constantly kind of giving checks and just being frustrating I think this move might have been a misclick um, and again I will throw in another tip just towards the end here with two seconds to go do not look at your clock just pre-move only if you think you're going to pre-move a check just do it because at this point in the race you kind of have to think that your opponent's not even a person because you're not trying to beat them at chess, you're trying to beat time itself and you only save time through pre-moving, like that's the only way to win, in this position I have 2 seconds, they have 8, like it's just not feasible really that I would ever win this. So I avoid looking at the clock and just go for pre-moves, in this position I, I just pre-move all this. All of this is pre-moved, I, I think I've used, how much time did I use in that? That one took a little bit longer, 4 milliseconds, but this took 1 millisecond, 4 milliseconds, very slow. But my point is that if you stop looking at the clock and you start pre-moving a bit towards the end, you'll save a lot of time. Um, and it will frighten the opponent because they'll be like, shit, he's going, oh, excuse my language, but he's going very quickly. Um, and here, I think this is a big problem now. So th this opponent here spent 1 second on this move, which in any game wouldn't you know, you shouldn't be doing life. If you're if you're going for annoying checks, the same rule applies back to you. The opponent here can check me twice if they want. They can check me. If I block with the rook, they win my rook. They're going to promote their win. And if I move, they can just check me incessantly. So they should be doing this to me, but they're not. Instead, they're going for this, their own plan. So they just spent a long time on this move. This move took one millisecond. My next move took one millisecond. My next move took one millisecond. And that's what won it. So three moves in three milliseconds beat them making one move in one second. So the pre-moves are really helpful at the end. Don't be disheartened if your time's low because often you can flag even when there's a sheer disadvantage. This happened in a blitz game, not even a bullet game. Um, so yeah, that's kind of for tip number two. It's like kind of never go up hope even when there's a chance to perhaps flag. You still have that. And never look at the clock itself towards the end because it will just stress you out. You know, you're not you're not playing against the opponent, you shouldn't be worried about their clock, you're just, just worried about making quick moves. And if it's predetermined that you win, then it's kind of predetermined. Um, I mentioned here there's a time ticker for time and trouble, I think we mentioned that before, you just tick on that setting. 
Um, and the main thing here is annoying the opponent. You want to be annoying them in board. You want to be creating problems and having to make them think. Shifting their king around, squares, keep checking them is just going to be annoying and add all these problems to them. Um, okay, so how long is this video? Oh my god, it's 15 minutes. That's so fucking long. I've been talking for so long. Okay, so we get to the third final tip. And this will be a combination of many other tips. Uh, Pre-moving itself can be very dangerous, as I mentioned. It's less dangerous at the end when there's not a whole lot of material on the board. But early on, you shouldn't really be pre-moving like upward of three or four moves. Um, if we go back to an analysis board. Say I played Nelson here. If I, if I pre-move silly moves, you know, you never really know what's going to happen. Because you just you're just mucking about. It's not really a good way to think. You think you're saving time, but look, I don't I don't even know what's going on. And no one knows what's going on. Uh, at least in the opening. It's not a very good suggestion. Um, oh, how do I just resign? Uh, but what you can do is pre-move just a few moves really early on uh, that are normally winning. I play against d4, I play the Slav, and against e4 I play the Kara Khan. So those are two fairly familiar moves for me that are going to mostly be alright for me to play. Uh, let's just say the rematch. Okay, so for the Queen's Gambit I can probably pre-move this. Now these are obviously terrible examples because I'm versing a bot, but the point is, is that you kind of want to be pre-moving like pieces that are natural to pre-move that won't cause problems in case they take advantage of it. Um, okay, so the next tip is kind of be tricky, but you can also save time by pre-moving like natural sort of moves. So go for sort of annoying annoying moves, uh, pre-move natural moves, pre-move like recaptures and all that, or capture captures. Um, and the last tip is mainly about your mindset. I find that like if you get tilted playing bullet, you can go on like humongous losing streaks where like you'll be winning in certain positions and you think you deserve to win. Um, but you'll lose simply based on time or some other factor or maybe a blunder and, and then you feel like you're owed the next game. So my main tip is don't play on tilt. I've been guilty of this myself where I'll keep playing, uh, you know, desperately trying to make up the rating I've lost. Um, but this is detrimental in the long run because you'll be in the wrong sort of mindset for bullet. Uh, so it's good to take a break and like play the next day or play. Sometimes it's just the opponent's day, you know, like the other person's just better. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, okay, last one. I guess what comes with pre-moving, don't always go with silly sacrifices. I see this tip constantly on uh, TikTok and it's a terrible tip. So I thought I'd just mention it in one second. Okay, this trick is like a trick I go for sometimes, but you shouldn't, it's only really goable if you, if, if you think they're pre-moving, basically, and a lot of people you can tell, um, so say they go here, now obviously this move is detrimental, I'm losing, if I, if I go here, this piece, this square is protected twice, lots of people pre-move, uh, excuse me, like, sorry knight f6 or they go knight c6 or they go bishop like they don't expect you to sack, sack the bishop um, and this is like a, just a bluff basically and bluffing can work um, but I wouldn't advise constantly going for bluffing especially this trick because this trick is baited now the higher you get the less successful it is um, and you just end up playing down a piece it, sure it kills a bit of time but it's just a bit annoying to deal with like if you're down a whole bishop um, so yeah, but that being said, say you have a position where, pff, I wouldn't even know how to set this up. Say you had a, pff, okay, say you had the king here, and there's the king here. So how can we do this quickly? Let's just, oh my god, sorry, I'm so bad. Okay, uh, just forget this move. Oh my god, I keep forgetting who's turned at this. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of a way to do this. So say, like, you can sometimes just bait, like, silly moves, right? Um, you know, like, if the, if the speed of the opponent's quick. So, like, if you take, say, they move. Oh, fucking, who's turn is it? Okay, now it's his turn. Okay, so, like, if I take here, and I'm just picking their pre-moving. Obviously, if they've already pre-moved. There's stuff like this. This this kind of depends on the situation. I'm not going to say this is a bad tip or a good tip, but it's kind of just like be smart about it because if you suspect they're pre-moving, sure it might work, but a lot of the times people 
um, early on in the bullet game, they won't be pre-moving if they're smart. Like they'll be kind of getting a feel for the opening, maybe pre-moving the first few moves. But the, the development pieces shouldn't be pre-moved entirely, that's how I would argue it. Um, okay, let's look at the last tip. Okay, another tip is uh, basically to always warm up. I don't know, like generally, if you think of any sport or like any anything you do, um, whether it be like basketball or something, or like y you always want to like warm up or stretch or um, you know, if you're studying for a test, you're studying before it, so you can your brain's kind of working on those topics. Um, with bullet chess, I'd really recommend going to Puzzle Rush, and before you start playing play a few survivals um, these are really handy for you know just for anything like good warming up good gets the tactics going in your head and also just you know like a warm-up is just good no matter how you see it right um, you see like if I had I'm not warmed up right now I just made a huge mistake on the 12 puzzle which is embarrassing but you get my drift like you need to warm up on these because they'll help you uh, they'll help you improve basically so we have a check here and then a, a checkmate so there's like you know it kind of gets you in the right mindset and if you think about it yes yeah, I said like anything in life you kind of need a warm up for so this is a good way if you want to practice time pressure you just go to puzzle rush and you do three minutes and three minutes is time so obviously you'll be finding the moves a bit quicker so you have to do a bullet Alrighty, this was an extremely long video, an excruciatingly long video. Um, okay, I'm out.